The fisherman is Jim Vincent, an outdoorsman and filmmaker who makes documentaries, wildlife, and fishing films. This is Kitty Vincent, Jim's better half. Kitty wanted to learn more about saltwater fishing, so she and Jim asked me to give her some pointers. My name is Mark Sosu. Kitty, Jim, and I were all down for a week of fishing at Club Pacifico on the island of Coiba, located in the Pacific Ocean off the southwest coast of Panama in Central America. Coiba is a wilderness area surrounded by 600 square miles of prime fishing waters that offer more than 60 species of game fish. This ocean fishing is accessible by sport fishing boats from Club Pacifico, which is situated on a sheltered bay on Coiba's northern side. Quite a place to learn the fine points of saltwater angling. Kitty filled me in on her previous angling experience before we went out on the water. I've fished mostly for uh, trout and tarpon and salmon, but I've never fished for, for any of these saltwater species that are prevalent in these waters. Okay, let and me show you a little bit about it. I'm not that familiar with the techniques or well, the fishing grounds. It's opportunity fishing. I like mm -hmm. to call it that. I, I think it, it's great. You use a variety of tackle, spinning tackle, bait casting or plug gear as we call it in salt water, mm -hmm. some trolling tackle, and you just kind of do what fits your needs or moods at the moment. Now we'll work along the shorelines here and move right in on the rocks or the reefs and you have species such as snapper, rooster fish, mm -hmm. um, jacks, amberjack. There are many species in Panama's Pacific waters. What makes the fishing here so spectacular is a confluence of currents like the counter equatorial current that starts in New Guinea crossing the Pacific until it hits Panama's southern coast. These currents are really rivers of moving water that flow through the ocean pulling warm surface water with them. This action forces cooler water to rise and replace it in a process called upwelling. As deeper water shifts to the surface, it brings nutrients within reach of the warm tropical sun, which causes the plankton to bloom, attracting hungry bait fish. And predators such as marlin, sailfish, and amberjack come to feed on the bait fish. It's a life cycle of food chain. I, I just like learning how to drive. I think sometimes it's easier if, you know, somebody other than your immediate family. I promise you I won't yell at you. Oh, really? Right. <laughs> That'd be nice. Teacher Gonzalez is going to be our guide, Kitty, and you'll enjoy fishing with him. He's one of the best. Imagine how in a time very long ago, volcanic eruptions pushed these islands to the surface from the terrain beneath the sea around them. Underneath the surface, these upcroppings drop off abruptly, forming an ideal habitat for game fish whose territories extend over the submarine lava formations. The potential of these waters will challenge the best tackle and angling techniques because even the smaller fish are tough to fight. Many of these tropical species can tax the skills of both salt and freshwater anglers. These game fish are constantly moving in a fiercely competitive environment. Took this thing right near the bottom. The energy and unrelenting pressure needed to boat these fish is tremendous. In Panama, there are no easy fish. Some are just larger than others. What she got? Well, my first catch of the day. Good. Look at the whole school there, Kitty. Little rainbow runner. Whole school there. A school of jacks under us here. Yeah. Opportunity fishing means taking advantage of every situation on the water. That's why you should always use the best tackle possible and have it rigged and ready to go. That's a snapper. Picked him right off the bottom. There he is. Oh, beautiful. Good eating. Yeah, it's a beauty. Oh. Woo oh. What kind of snapper is that? What kind of snapper, Chi Chi? Uh, we got what a snapper. Kind of Take a look, because we're going to put him back in the water. Oh. 
Beautiful. You got your gloves? There you go. <laughs> Look at the teeth on them, Kitty. I see. Every snapper has teeth. The Kuberas have more teeth than the others, or bigger ones. Okay, Chi Chi, let's put them back. Let's put them back in the water slowly. Just let them go in there. Let's get that air bladder down. There he goes. There he goes, all the way down. I can see him going straight for the bottom. You see him down there, Kitty? Yeah. Look at him. Look how clear that water is. Listen to the rocks down there. All the way down to the bottom. An experienced guide like Chi Chi is always searching for signs of feeding fish. While traveling, you can change leaders and tie on baits to be ready for those moments of peak opportunity that come and go so quickly. That's really the essence of fishing, being prepared. That first cast may be the only chance you'll get. fish, there could be more. Rocks are a haven for many species. The exciting part of fishing topwater plugs is watching the strike. With polarized glasses and a wide-brimmed hat to cut the glare, you can see a fish stalk the lure. They go right back down. They act like the blue jacks, the cobalt jacks? No, no, they... it's a totally different fish. Oh, I see. <sighs> These fish will go right down through the bottom. <sighs> it's it's a lot of upward pumping with an amberjack. They don't run very much. Uh-huh. And you've got to get him up inch by inch. Sometimes I'll pump him up if I can, and other times I use side pressure when he's closer. Uh, what does that do? It turns his head, and there's a thing called Sosin's Law. Wherever the <laughs> head of the fish goes, the tail is sure to follow. <laughs> See, you reach levels, and you got to uh -huh. test them and get them up from a level. They get progressively more tired at each level? Well, it isn't that, but you got to break their will. You get them coming, you don't stop. See, here he comes. Here he comes. How would you sum up your fighting technique, Mark? What's my fighting technique? Did you see the size of the shark that ate that amberjack? Yeah, I caught a glimpse of it. That's what we call a one-biter down here. He'll take a 40-pound amberjack in one big gulp. Wow. <laughs> that brings us back to the problem of re-rigging. In order to catch these fish down here, you really have to have knots that test out at 100%. What does that mean? 100%. It means that that would equal the unknotted breaking strength of the line. You cannot lose in the knot. If you lose in the knot, you just don't know how much pressure to put on a fish, and you'll break them off. Right now, I'm tying a bimini twist, which will um, give us that 100% strength. That makes anything beyond the twist very, very strong. It was originally an offshore knot Kitty used to make a double line. 
it has become the standard for light tackle specialists. They use this knot to give them a 100% system. I still don't understand why you have, why not just use the line rather than well, having the knots? If you just if you just tied the lure to the line, mm -hmm. it would break at the knot going to the lure. And you don't want to do that. You want it to break in the line if you put too much pressure on. If not, you need some protection too so that you can really fight these fish. We're putting a shock leader on now. And this this is a long length of 60 pound test in this case which will, if the fish is running away from you, this will stream across its back and take some of the fraying and the abrasion. Oh, because it's thicker. It's heavier, right. I like to use a double surgeon's knot because it's quick. It's just like two overhand knots, and you can put the shock leader in there. You pull all four ends together first, mm -hmm. drop the two short ones, pull it again, just trim the ends. One. You have to cut this real close? Or no, real I, close? close enough, but not too close. People cut knots too close. And then when they do that, they damage the knot itself and it breaks. But that makes an easy connection between a shock leader and a bimini twist, and it only takes a second to do. And then it's just a matter of tying a plug on. What's the knot that you tie the plug on with? Well, I use several. I use a, a double clinch knot. This will just be an improved clinch knot now because we have a ring on there. Sometimes you use a loop if you want a different action. So it's part of the whole system? Of part of the whole system, 100%. That's the only way you can fight a fish and put the maximum pressure. And you know what it is to fight a fish here. They try and get in the rocks or they're running on you. Right. And if you, if you don't know where the knots are going to break, you just can't stop that fish. I think I understand. <laughs> there you go. Okay. And that's all there is to it. You just yeah. take your rod and you go back and cast. Don't shake, don't shake. Everything's got to be smooth. Reel down, that's it. A little bit of pressure, see if you can pump them. If he goes, let him go. Kind of use your rod as a cushion. But okay. If he starts to go down, just drop it a little, see if you can get him back up. Okay. Don't give line unless you have to. Just that's it. Just kind of feel out where he, what he's right. doing. Either put your hand on it if you can hold it, or don't put your hand on it if the fish is going to okay. move off. Try and feel the line. If you're gaining on him. All the way down. That's it. Hand on the reel. Lift up. Test him. That's it. Test him. Keep him working. Good. Good. Reel down. Reel down. Hand on the reel. All right, let him go. Go ahead, reel down now. Don't wait. I know you're tired, but if you're not more tired than the fish, you're not going to win. Come on. That's it. Reel down. Keep working. It's tough in this hot sun, isn't it? Yeah. How far down do you think he is? Oh, he's a good 30, 40 feet, maybe more. The water's so clear, we should see him. Watch the line under the boat. If he goes under the boat, what you want to do is put, drop the rod down, even if you have to put it in the water. He's not doing it now. See him down there? Yeah. He's going to go round and round. You've got to pump him up. If it's an amberjack, we're going to tag him. Is it? It's a good amberjack. There he is. OK, can you get him, Chi Chi? He's heavy. Let him go. Okay. Look out. Watch the hooks. Watch the hooks. <laughs> Look at that amber jack. Oh. Tagging and releasing fish helps to preserve a valuable resource and allows marine biologists to learn more about the life cycle of the species. Good catch. Good catch. The plastic tag with coded numbers will enable scientists to trace this amber jack's growth and movements if and when it's recaught. However, not all game fish are migratory. Some species are territorial, such as Kubera is the largest of the snappers that live at moderate depths, hunting around the hollows and ledges of rocky formations. While they feed on live bait, they often hit artificials aggressively. There he is. Did you, did you see what it was? I don't see. I always see the black water. There's some big snappers around here. Yeah. Strong. Put him up close to the boat. Put him up close to the boat, you'll tell me what it is. 
Going for the rocks. That's the trouble, kitty. You lose half of these fish in the rocks. Those big snapper get down in there, you can't stop. They smell the rocks. Come on, baby, away from those rocks. I like to drop the rod tip when he goes. That puts less stress on the... Less uh, no, it has less drag. You have a thing called starting drag or inertia. It takes more to get the spool turning than to keep it turning. So what you're trying to do is minimize the pressure until the fish starts running. Then once this spool is turning, you're able to put more pressure on it. And when he stops, you want to work it. Mm -hmm. Bring right down to the water, bump up, right down to the water, bump him up. Come on. That's a cooperer? Yes, sir. That's a snapper. They're bottom feeders. They can be very aggressive fish. They feed on live fish primarily. There he comes. Oh, he's a beauty. Look he's out. a beauty. He always makes that last run. Uh -huh. Take the rod right at him. Let him go. Don't try and stop. He wants to go down. He doesn't like it up here. There he is. Look at those teeth. There he is on the surface. Get him right on the lip, we'll cut the plug loose. Lip gaffing a fish through the lower jaw where there is just loose skin and no vital organs will not harm it. The plug can be removed quickly and the fish released. Oh, these are beauties. See how bright red they are? And yet, when they're down deep, that color will change to gray. Red, red fades, it's the first color to fade as you go into the water. Let's get that plug out and we'll release them. Slip him in the water, Chi-Chi. There he goes. Very good. Let's try for another one. Knowing the right fishing techniques means more fun on the water, and like any other skill, it's developed over a period of time. There's no substitute for experience. Having a fish on the line has always been the best teacher. Did you happen to see what it was? No, I didn't. Blue Jack, yeah. Cobalt Jack. See him right over the rocks? Yeah, they sure can pull. Okay, here he comes. A great top water fish. They'll hit those plugs mm -hmm. under the water, on top of the water. Very aggressive, very strong. Look at those beautiful cobalt colors. That's why they call him a Blue Jack. The rooster fish, or Pez Gallo, prowls the surf line of sandy beaches in search of food. A noisy topwater plug chugged back to the boat can attract their attention pronto. Jumping energetically, this species prefers to fight on top. The rooster fish is named for its comb, which is actually the seven long rays of its first dorsal fin. The comb flashes in the air as the fish streaks across the surface. Not much is known about their life cycles, except that rooster fish are common from the surf to medium depths, where they feed on smaller fishes. The beauty of fishing in these waters is the variety of life forms. Killer whales sometimes pass through on their migrations. These huge marine mammals often travel in pods as they move between northern and southern regions. Life on the island itself is just as varied as in the surrounding sea. The rainforest jungle is a habitat supporting a tremendous number of plants and animals. Birds, like the scarlet macaw, make a home in the forest canopy, which is a living mesh composed of hardwood trees and interweaving vines. And its inhabitants include the three-toed sloth, a slow-moving tree-living animal, descended from enormous ground sloths that lived millions of years ago. Its sluggish metabolism and lazy pace contrast sharply with the whirlwind flight of the hummingbird, just one of more than 700 species of birds in Panama. Panama's fishing possibilities are limitless.
After fishing inshore, you can move out and troll for such species as yellowfin tuna, marlin, sailfish, wahoo, and dolphin. Watching these fish invade the spread adds to the excitement. That's why a skipper like Chi-Chi staggers the baits and stays alert to what's happening in the wake. He also scans the sea carefully for logs or other debris that might harbor dolphin. Hey, my fish, that's a dolphin. Beautiful fish. Come on. Come on, Kenny, come on, hold on, okay. hold on. Just keep lifting. Keep lifting. Let's just jump again, let him go. Come on, girl, come on. And a girl. Atta girl, hard day's work in a Panama sun, isn't it? What do you think? How's it feel to fight it? It's a hard fish to fight. Come on. Come on. Suggest I, do? I suggest you lead into it, pump that fish okay. back. The dolphin will lay broadside to you. If you don't move him, he's not gonna come. Like a jack, huh? Just like a jack. Okay. You ready, Chi Chi? I'm ready. Uh, I lost him. Tough luck, tough yeah. luck. Yeah, learn by experience. Catch we'll catch another one, Chi Chi. Yeah. Yeah. Trolling is not the relaxed kind of fishing people think it is. It requires concentration and awareness because it means constantly changing course, speed, baits, and even the distance astern. You have to be alert to what's happening around you. Hit the rappelers. Oh. I do. Okay, there he is. Isn't that pretty? Chi Chi? Yeah, very pretty. Chi Chi. He's like a lot of fight All right, too. look at that. That's a yellowfin tuna. Oh, he's beautiful. You can take those fish casting, you can take them jigging, you can take them trolling. They're super fish, very strong. Some people okay. think they're the strongest of all the tunas. Really? Are yeah, the you have yellowfin. No, no, I, blackfin I, are the smallest. Oh, but I've seen those huge ones, too. Yellowfin get very big, but oh, bluefin are the, are the biggest. Bluefin is the biggest. Yellowfin, then they have Pacific big eye, Atlantic big eye, several species of tuna. Kitty, notice that we have a spread out there. We've got an artificial back out on here. We have a Panama strip bait over here. Panama bait is just a beautiful, beautifully rigged bait. It looks something like a squid in the water or a flying fish on top. And we have another artificial here. We have a daisy chain of squids as a teaser, hoping to make a surface commotion and bring these fish up. Look at the way he's rigging that bait. He's gonna clean it, he's gonna fold it in half, put the hook inside, and sew it all the way around. It's called a Panama bait. They sort of get attracted to the, by the teasers and they move in closer to take a look? For some reason, the teasers raise the fish. They come in, they get on the back of it. You'll see them. They'll start chewing on those squids as they come in. I like teasers too. I feel that half the fish will come up on the teasers like those squids back in there. This is the only place in the world where they rig a bait like that. He's not really using that much of the fish. No, the only thing they use is that little belly section. So we can catch a marlin or a sailfish on it? Yeah, but it's a good sailfish bait, Kitty. It's a strong bait. The hook is sewn inside. It's got silver on both sides. Most strip baits are made of only one side. This one's made on both sides. So you have the silver belly of a bonita showing on both sides. The hook's in the middle. It's sewn. This was the place where it originated. It has a beautiful action in the water, and it's called a Panama bait. There. No, he doesn't have it. I don't have him. Maybe he'll come up again. There he comes. There he comes. I will. He's got it. Back on this. How do you get it? Do you want to pull it out or what? Move. Line up. I got to get this one. What are you doing? I'm nothing. My God, girl. You're all the way in China. <laughs> what have you been doing? I can't believe it. Go jump again. Here he comes. Oh, that's gorgeous. Reel down, just like you did on a smaller fish. Come on, you're not gaining on him. The water's getting shallower. <laughs> oh, that's really neat. Reel down. Pump. Wait a minute. You don't have enough drag on there to do it. Come 
Watch him. Watch him. Watch him. Watch him. Sometimes I'll hang down on the bottom. But this fish is up. You can see the angle on the line. I'll tell you he's up. Just keep him up. When you fish with lighter tackle, the fish is more prone to stay on the surface. When you fish with heavy gear, very often the fish goes down and doesn't jump as much. When you can take line, keep taking it. Left him. Atta, girl. OK, kitty, come on. Reel down. Reel down. Doing well. That's it. You're getting pretty good at this. All right, let's move in on him. Let's move in on him. Pick line in, kidding. Boy, Ben. Cuidado. Stay there. Real, 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 real. Let him get the leader. That's it. What? Look out. Watch those jumps. Let's get a tag in. He's beautiful. He's sort of got a big copper stripe and then purple stripes vertically. Yeah. Big fish. Oh, he's beautiful. Congratulations, Kitty. You get a good you feeling go. watching a great game fish swim away unharmed after a tough battle. It's an unforgettable sight that will live long in your memory, longer than any tattered photograph of fish on a rack.